Hi, and welcome to the fourth episode of Learning to Edit in DaVinci Resolve. My name is Darren Mostyn, and in this episode, I'm going to show you trimming. Over the next few minutes, you'll learn ripple, roll, slip, slide, and multi-point trimming techniques. So let's start with basic trimming. We've got an interview here that needs a little fine-tuning. And only after we name the shop uh, by certain course of events, uh, certain course of events... Uh... So already you can hear that he's saying the same thing twice. So we need to trim one of those back. There are two styles for trimming in Resolve. The arrow here, which is A on the keyboard, is normal trimming mode. And if I press T on my keyboard, that takes me into trimming mode. So we're going to start off in normal trimming mode, which is the arrow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this clip back a little bit. As I move my mouse down onto the clip and then towards the cut point, you'll see that it changes into a bracket. This means that I can now select here and literally move the clip back and forward. Now there's a magnet tool here, which is currently on, and that allows me to snap to edit points. Okay, I'm just going to switch that off for a moment. So now when I'm trimming, it's not snapping to any edit points. After we name the shop uh, by certain course of events. Okay, so let's just trim a little bit more. And now what we've done is left a gap. So if I click here in the gap and press backspace, that deletes. And you'll notice that the whole timeline moved up then. So let's play that back now. After we name the shop uh, by certain course of events. Uh... So that's a much tighter edit. Let's take a look at this first shot. Out in the movie that it was his sled that reminded I. So again, we've got a few words just hanging on the end that we need to trim off. This time, double click the shot. That loads it into the source viewer. Now what we can do is use the source viewer to make the edit. And as a useful guide, you could switch on your audio overlays. There we go. So let's play the shot again. Rosebud was. It turns out in the movie that it was his sled that... So sled is the word that we want. I'm going to use the left and right arrow keys just to fine tune the trim. Now if I mark out, it will update the timeline. So you can see we're left with a gap on the timeline, so just highlight it and press backspace. And that deletes the gap. So let's take a look at the ripple tool. This is going to save us having to manually delete that gap each time when we're trimming. So it's a much faster way of editing. So pressing T or clicking here puts us into the trim mode. And let's have a look at this shot here. If I press V, that will take me to the nearest edit point. And then using the forward slash key, that will allow the playhead to play a little bit before and a little bit after that edit point. Part of the neighborhood. And there was no... So we were the only bike shop that was easy. It's a really quick way to just review the edit point. So we can see that he's actually clipped off a little bit here. So trim edit mode is basically enabling ripple editing. So this saves us having to delete these gaps that we've been doing so far. So if I just take the end of this shot and just trim, you'll see that the whole timeline is moving up. And if I trim the other way, so we don't get any gaps. The timeline is constantly changing. Let's play the end of this shot. Mission or something like that to have their bicycles fixed. So there was a bit of a, there was a bit of a, so again, it needs trimming, but we're going to do it in ripple mode this time. Press V to select the edit. By pressing the U key on your keyboard, you can toggle which side of the edit is actually going to be trimmed. So this is currently selecting this clip. If I press U again, it will select both sides. And if I press U again, it selects this clip. So it's a toggle. So I want to trim this side. And basically using comma and full stop, I can trim one frame at a time. And you see that we're ripple editing. So everything is moving up. If I press Shift, and the arrow key, it will move five frames at a time. You can change this in the preferences to be whatever you want. One other way of trimming is to put your playhead at the point you want to edit. Like that to have their bicycles fixed. So there was a... Let's put the playhead at the edit point and simply press E. And that will extend the edit to that point. So that's ripple editing using the trim mode. So let's take a look at the roll tool. To use the roll tool, you need to make sure that you're in trim mode. And uh, let's have a look at this edit here. I'm going to press V takes me to the edit point, and then using U, I can toggle which side of the edit is highlighted. So I want both sides highlighted at the same time. This puts me into roll mode. Now, let me just play around the edit point, forward slash. You probably won't ever see that customer again, um, unless there may be a local person. By putting my mouse in the middle, you see I have a double square bracket, and this means I'm in roll mode. So I'm just literally moving left and right with my mouse, or I can use the arrow keys to nudge. And we're just literally moving the edit point. So you see that the timeline is not moving at all. Just literally the edit point. And what I'm taking off this clip, I'm adding onto this clip automatically because we're in roll. This is a really good way of adjusting the edit point without affecting your timeline duration. Another good way of using the roll tool is for doing split editing. And this is one way of editing video and audio separately. At the moment, you see this link tool. This means every time I select an edit, 
it selects the video and the audio with that. If I deselect, you can select just either video or audio. So in this case, I'm going to take the audio and I'm going to roll it down. And press play. This is wonderful, but the core of this shop is, you know, maintaining bikes and helping. That's a really good way of doing a split edit. This is sometimes called a J cut or an L cut. So in this case, it would be an L cut. So you can adjust the edit with your mouse. You can use the arrow keys, or if you press W, it will put you into dynamic trim. And this enables you to use the J, K and L keys to trim. So let's take a look at slipping edits. What this allows us to do is to make changes to the shot without moving the edit point. So let's play back this clip. Projects on him, uh, going through school and stuff like that. So I appreciate it. Okay, so the first thing I notice is it takes him a long time to come into the shot. So I'm gonna fix that using the slipping tool. Make sure you're in trim mode. And then as you move on to the clip, you see the icon changes. Grab the clip and just simply slip left and right. So I'm just doing this with my mouse, left and right. You can use the arrow keys on your keyboard as well. Now if you look at the timeline viewer, we've now got four windows. The top two are the first and last frames of this clip. The bottom one is the last frame of the previous shot. And the lower right window is the first frame of the next edit. So I'm just going to slip this clip forwards until I see him enter the shot. And there he is. And let's just back it off a bit. Let go and play it back. I've done several projects on him, uh, going through school and stuff like that. So, And that's much better. He enters the shot much quicker now. So that's the slip tool. The slide tool is very similar. You still need to be in the trim mode. Come down onto your clip. As you move your mouse down towards the bottom, you'll see that it changes into a, into a different icon, so double square bracket. And all I have to do now is slide this clip. So what's happening with the clip in slide mode is the duration doesn't change, the in and out point doesn't change, but its actual position on the timeline is what changes, and the previous and next edits are being trimmed to compensate. This is just making editing really fast for us. A slip and slide is a really quick way of just moving clips without changing your timeline duration. So Resolve can also do multi-point trimming. You can either use the command key to select or just lasso and literally start trimming. And you see I'm adjusting multiple clips at once there. You could also type in a number as well. So you could say add one second. You don't have to type double zeros as time code. You can just use a full stop key. So now I've shown you how fast, easy and accurate the trim tools are to use. In the next episode, I'm going to talk you through working with audio in DaVinci Resolve. Thanks for listening.